So while Liz Truss reportedly plans to slash VAT, and that sounds jolly for all, but if you spend a hundred quid a week on stuff, you only get a few quid back. If you spend ten grand, you get hundreds. It doesn't cover the things people need most either, like food and kids' clothes. Meanwhile, the vast price tag for such a policy comes from the government's coffers, and will be paying surely for generations to come. So is it a bold, ambitious plan to make Britain competitive and manage inflation, or is it regressive and flawed? Well, that depends whether you're Team Sunak or Truss. Well, joining us in the studio is our political correspondent Tom Harwood. Tom, I mean, this plan's come out from the Trust campaign team, or well, reportedly come out from the Trust campaign team. Big slash in VAT. Of course, we saw this with Gordon Brown during uh, the big uh, the big crisis of two thousand and eight. Rishi Sunak's campaign team have come out and said, "No, no, 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 no. This is a dreadful idea. Explain to us more." Yes, that you can see arguments in favour of it and arguments against.、Uh, clearly, the arguments in favour of it are that the prices are rising currently. If you take taxes off prices, those prices won't rise as quickly. They may even fall in some. Areas and particularly, this might be a good thing for businesses that are really struggling with energy prices that aren't capped. They're already paying much higher prices for energy than households even are, and so potentially、uh, you might be able to keep prices lower than they otherwise would be if you did this VAT、uh, cut. However, it's a very, very expensive thing. To do, you forego a hell of a lot of revenue by even having that five percent, or I suppose we should describe it as a twenty-five percent tax cut from twenty percent down to fifteen percent.、Uh, that sort of thing is tens of billions of pounds in lost, lost revenue to the exchequer, and there is the legitimate question in terms of where could that money. Be better spent. Might it be better to do a less universal and more targeted form of redistribution?、Um, but then again, there's also the argument that VAT is one of the least distortive taxes that we have. Potentially, taxing consumption is one of the best ways, or least bad ways, that we could possibly tax. It's why Margaret Thatcher shifted so much taxation from income. To consumption, because it's less bad in terms of economic growth. It encourages investment. Maybe you don't want a hell of a lot of、uh, spending when that money could be going to growth. So, real big questions here over this policy. Although some big、uh, positives potentially on the inflation side of things, it has been described in the papers this weekend as a nuclear option. It's something that is incredibly expensive. To do, and potentially one of the reasons why the trust campaign haven't come out with it as a formal policy, and it's just being floated in the papers. Potentially, that's to have those arguments now before they decide whether to do it or not. I mean, Charlie, what do you think about this? Because it, it sounds really great on the tin, doesn't it? Slash VAT, paying less tax on the prices of stuff. Who doesn't want that? But it doesn't exactly do what's said on the tin, does it? No, not necessarily. And I think the main reason why it's being proposed or floated, as Tom says. Is that it's quick. It's a quick cut. It will make a difference immediately, and that's possibly the main benefit that we'll have. Because this, I mean, this leadership election has been going on for God knows how long, way too long. I think everyone can agree, and the country is desperate for some change to, to kick on as soon as possible. A cut in VAT will have an effect the next day, whereas other policies,、um, targeted support, and changes in our economic structure could take more time to have an effect and for consumers to feel that benefit. But it doesn't really reach、uh, the, the, the most important places, does it? And when, you, when we talk about targeted support, something that comes to my mind is usually that takes quite a bit of time and quite a lot of administration to sort out. And the energy price cap's gone up. That's happened. These bills are going to hit people's accounts from next month.、Mm. Yes, it's really tricky to try and get money where it needs to go. You can have uplifts in the benefit system. That's relatively easy and quick to do. But where do you find the people who are Aren't really managing, but are not on benefits. What is the mechanism to get cash to those individuals? Rishi Sunak has used in the past mechanisms of sort of council tax rebates, making sure that local authorities can deliver pots of funding. But again, that's clunky. Not always is local government the most. Tip top shape in this country. Not always is it the most efficient way of doing things. People will fall through the gaps, which is why. 
superficially, the Labour Party's proposal of just simply cancelling any sort of price rises and pretending it's not happening and spending however many tens of billions, maybe even getting into over a hundred billion to make that price free, that price rise just go away with a freeze, uh, might superficially seem uh, attractive. But in the same way that the VAT cut would be a big subsidy to those who spend the most, similarly, those who have second homes or large houses would get the most benefit out of that sort of freeze. And also, crucially, most crucially, it distorts the price signal. And the price signal is the way that the market in the end resolves these issues. If the energy price goes up, then you get more reward for making more energy. At the moment, the market is screaming for more supply, and that supply will come if people can make profits through that. Additionally, it's screaming for people to demand less, to use less energy. Now, if we keep the price of energy at the same level as it is now, frankly, people will be using too much energy. It's a policy for blackouts. It's a policy for energy shortages. Really, we need to find a way to quickly get more supply into the system and, frankly, to get people to use less when they don't have to use as much as they think they do. And that's why the price mechanism really should be preserved. And the policy of Rishi Sunak and Liz Truss, although they haven't spelled out in great detail what they would do, they do seem to reject the universal price freeze approach in favour of more targeted support. That preserves the price mechanism. And that's a really, really important point to, to drive home.